Saul is scared. He's anointed, but insecure. You ever felt jealous and you can't help it? Come on, let's be human. Let's be real. Have you ever seen someone excelling in an area that you thought you were called to and you felt jealous and couldn't help it? And felt compelled to post something about them or felt compelled to call about them or felt compelled to tell somebody something bad about them. You may be dealing with a Saul in you. The next day, an evil spirit came forcefully upon him on Saul. And watch this. He was prophesying in the house. It is possible for you to be prophesying and insecure. He threw a spear at him. The spear stuck in the wall. David grabbed the spear. David has this spear, and perhaps David is thinking that I could throw this spear back at him, but I remember Saul was a great man. Saul was one of the greatest figures in human history. Saul was anointed by God. Saul actually prophesied. Saul is my first king. Saul is a man that's hurting. Saul is just insecure. Saul is God's man. Perhaps I can take this spear. And I can throw this spear back at him. After all, I'm anointed too. After all, I can prophesy too. After all, I killed a lion and I killed a bear. After all, I killed Goliath. After all, I just got finished killing 10,000 Philistines. I could throw this back at you. I I I could. And And he has a spear and he's thinking, I could throw it at him. The people will love me. The people already think I'm beautiful because I'm ready. I look good. I've I've, I've shown myself as a mighty man of valor. I've been eating at Saul's table all of my life. I've been faithful. I've never spoke a word out against him. I love him. If I kill him, the people will respect me. I could kill him. I could become the next person. I can become the next king. But I also could become a Saul. Just at the tip of Africa, just below Turkey, there lies a nation called Israel. In the middle of Israel, there's a city called Gilead. In the middle of Gilead, there's a town called Mizpah. Down in this town called Mizpah, it's the tribe of Benjamin, the house of Kish. There's a utility room where there's a young man or young man hidden behind what the Bible calls the supplies or the stuff. They're hidden, shaking, Scared and afraid is one of the greatest figures in human history. They're shaking, afraid, is this man by the name of Saul. Saul is scared. He's anointed, but insecure. Ask the person next to you, are you anointed, but insecure? He's already had the oil of the anointing placed on him by the prophet Samuel. He's already been told of his greatness. He's already been prophesied to that you're going to be the man that's going to change the entire world. But there he lies behind some stuff, shaken, afraid, scared of the people, scared of their thoughts, scared of what they may think about him, not wanting to lead. He's anointed, but he's insecure. Outside of that same place, the whole congregation of Israel are gathered together, waiting for their king to appear. Samuel standing on top of a hill, saying, this is what the kingdom's going to look like. But where? Where's Saul? Saul is anointed, but he's afraid. He's anointed, but he's insecure. Let me, let me, let me give you, before I give you Saul's resume, before I give you his bio, let me give you his eulogy. He's a young man there at the time. He's anointed, but he's insecure. He's afraid. He's scared, but but he's already anointed. But I look 70 or 40 years later or or, or 60 years later at the age of 72, the Bible gives his eulogy. Give me 1 Chronicles chapter 10. 1 Chronicles chapter 10 verse 13 says this. So Saul died. Why? Three reasons. Number one. For his unfaithfulness, which he had committed against the Lord. Number two, because he did not keep the word of the Lord. And number three, because he consulted a witch for guidance. That's his eulogy. So Saul died. 
unfaithful to the Lord. God gave him a word. He had it, but he did not keep the word of the Lord. And number three, his insecurity caused him to seek a witch or a medium for guidance. Watch this. Verse 14 says, but he did not inquire of the Lord. Therefore, God killed him and turned the kingdom over to David, the son of Jesse. I want to help you to kill the Saul in you before Saul kills you. I want to help you to be anointed, but not insecure. Let, let me look in the middle of, of Saul's life. There was a time where Saul had come out of his, his hiding and the Bible called uh, for him to fight against the Philistines. The prophet Samuel told him that I want you to go and kill these Philistines. I, I want you uh, to go and wipe them out. So he did that. David is now his right hand man. David is anointed also. David has had oil poured on him also. But David was there only to help Saul. David had no ulterior motive. David just wanted to be a blessing to the kingdom. So him and David, they go out and they kill all of the Philistines. On the way back, the ladies come out dancing they come out spinning they come out doing their praise and worship songs and the bible says they came out to meet Saul someone say to meet Saul Saul. they came out to meet Saul to celebrate Saul it specifically uh, specifically says Saul but the verbiage bothered Saul the the verbiage in the song says Saul killed his thousands and David killed his ten thousands They came to meet Saul to say, Saul, you killed your thousands and your buddy David killed his ten thousands. Now, a secure man, a secure man would say, wait a minute. This is my kingdom. I got a thousand. I'm just doing mathematics here. I got a thousand and my boy, he got ten thousand. So in my kingdom, we just beat eleven thousand people. You, You see, but insecurity won't cause you to add it or cause you to divide. David killed 10,000, and I only have 1,000. Let's look at the passage here. Give me 1 Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel 18 verse 8 says that Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. Watch the words. They have credited to David. They have accredited to David. When you're insecure, one of the children or the stepchildren of insecurity is worrying about what people think and worrying about what people have said. God told you to kill the Philistines, but you're worrying that they have said that David, they have credited David with 10,000s, he thought, but me, only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? And from that time on, Saul Kept a close eye on David. Look what happened next. Because he was keeping a close eye on David, because he was insecure, watching him the very next day, an evil spirit from God came on him. (laughs) Jewish history teaches us that this was insecurity and anxiety attack and depression. When you are insecure and you're not focusing on what the Lord has called you to do and you're focusing on what people have said about you, insecurity will come on you and anxiety will come on you. Anxiety will cause you to eye other people. One of the thoughts of anxiety or one of the thoughts of insecurity is if you're paying too much attention to what the person next to you is doing. If someone who has a similar calling as you, you're eyeing them, an evil spirit is going to come on you. The next, it happens instantly. Does it say two weeks later? No. Does it say a month afterwards? The next day, an evil spirit came on him. And how did it come? Forcefully on him. You ever felt jealous and you can't help it? Come on, let's be human. Let's be real. Have you ever seen someone excelling in an area that you thought you were called to and you felt jealous and couldn't help it? And felt compelled to post something about them or felt compelled to call about them or felt compelled to tell somebody something bad about them? You may be dealing with the Saul in you. The next day, an evil spirit came forcefully upon him on Saul. And watch this. He was prophesying in the house. It is possible for you to be prophesying and insecure prophetic but pathetic God is talking to you but you can't help but look and see what this other person is doing he was anointed but insecure he was prophesying in the house with David 
David was his homeboy playing the instrument because David was skilled. He was a skilled harpist. He was a skilled musician. He was a, the Bible calls him the sweet psalmist of Israel. He was there to help saw through his anxiety, help saw through his depression, help saw through his insecurity with a pure heart. And the scripture says that he was prophesying in the house with David, playing the lyre, and as he usually did, Saul had a spear in his hand. Be careful about a person who's anointed and insecure with a spear. Oh, Saul has a spear in his hand, and the Bible says as he's prophesying, as David is playing, he threw the spear at him. Because of his rage of insecurity and jealousy. Not only once, but how many times does it say? Twice. Twice. This is just the second time. Another time it happened again later on in, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 19. You don't have to turn there, but it happened again. David, he, he could have he he ducked it and then attacked Saul. But the Bible says the third time that this happened, he threw a spear at him. The spear stuck in the wall. David grabbed the spear. David has this spear, and perhaps David is thinking that I could throw this spear back at him, but I remember Saul was a great man. Saul was one of the greatest figures in human history. Saul was anointed by God. Saul actually prophesied. Saul is my first king. Saul is a man that's hurting. Saul is just insecure. Saul is God's man. Perhaps I can take this spear. And I can throw this spear back at him. After all, I'm anointed too. After all, I can prophesy too. After all, I killed a lion and I killed a bear. After all, I killed Goliath. After all, I just got finished killing 10,000 Philistines. I could throw this back at you. I I I could. And And he has a spear and he's thinking, I could throw it at him. The people will love me. The people already think I'm beautiful because I'm ready. I look good. I've I've, I've shown myself as a mighty man of valor. I've been eating at Saul's table all of my life. I've been faithful. I've never spoke a word out against him. I love him. If I kill him, the people will respect me. I could kill him. I could become the next person. I can become the next king. But I also could become a Saul. See, David understood this. I don't have to eye anybody. If I'm anointed then I'm anointed. If God called me, then I'm called. If somebody comes up that looks like what I'm supposed to be doing, it doesn't matter because when I'm anointed, I'm anointed. Tell the person next to you, if I'm anointed, then I'm anointed. David had the same thing happen to him later on in his life, but that's a different story for a different day on a different Sunday. Saul, the great man of God, is anointed, but he's insecure. See, insecurity has children, grandchildren. children. Insecurity will cause you to know, uh, uh, to feel like you're called, but have to hurt other people. Insecurity will make you uh, try, to, try to pull other people out of their positions because they threaten you. 
Insecurity will make a woman always be threatened by other women around their man because they don't fully believe in their position. Insecurity will make you try to get somebody fired off of your job because you don't believe God really sent you there. Insecurity will cause pastors to kill people up under them because they don't believe. They think that this person's going to take over. But when you've been called by God, anointed by God, and you're sure of who you are, you just stand. And then after you've done all to stand, you just stand again. Therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. Are you listening to me? Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Ask the person next to you, are you anointed? But insecure? I'm looking at Saul's life here. The Bible tells me that there was one time when Saul was told by his mentor, the prophet Samuel, the man who placed him in the office, Saul, you got to fight another battle. And I need you, the Lord God needs you to do it the way that he says to do it. I want you to go stand up on top of a hill and I want you to wait for seven days. Do not make a move until I come to you. I'm the prophet Samuel. I'm not going to be around all the time, but you got to wait for me to come. come the Bible says in this chapter that, that he was on this hill and he had thousands of enemies around him. The scripture says that at the time that he had those enemies around him, his boys were standing up on the hill. And when they saw the enemy, they got afraid and started running in caves. You have to understand that as a leader, people are going to always scatter. You cannot be moved when people move. Are you listening to me? If you're a leader, people are going to scatter. You got to just let them scatter, but you got to stand. The Bible says that they went into caves and hiding. Now Saul is left there with 600 men. Then the 600 men that were with them started complaining. And Saul, because of his insecurity, he felt pressure to make a move. Be careful when you make moves that are not God decisions. They're just what you think is good decisions. Paul, Saul, he takes, and the people, he's listening to the people again. The first time he was scared because of the people who were outside want to make him king. Second time, he's scared because they said David had 10,000. Now, he's listening to the people again because he, he's, an, he's an idolatry. He, see, when you put people over God, you, are, you, are, you have made them your idol. Young people, some of you, you feel so much peer pressure, and you want to do what they're doing in the world. You don't know that God is saying that, listen, you're making them your idol. I want to be your, your American idol. So, he listens to the people once again. And the Bible says that he got out of his lane. He put on the priest's garments and started making sacrifices like he was a priest. He started giving the fellowship offerings. He started giving the burnt offerings. You know, when you're, when you're insecure, they have you looking stupid. You ain't no... For some of you, you're not an usher, you're a deacon. He put on... The priest garments. And right when he got through making his bogus off offering, making his bogus offering, the prophet shows up. He said, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Pull up 1 Samuel chapter 13. Here's what, what his words were. 1 Samuel 13 verse 11 says, he says, what have you done? Ask Samuel. Saul replied, when I saw the what? The men were what? Scattering. And that you did not come at the set time. You can't put your time on God's set time. You, it may be due in 30 days, but God says, you're waiting for me to pay it in 30 days. I'll pay the whole thing off. Don't wait on a set time. My time. I am God. I exist outside of time. I look into t- I am transcendent. Don't, don't wait on what you set as a set time. He said that, he said, you didn't come on the set time, and the Philistines were, were assembled at, at Michmash. Verse 12 says, I thought, I thought, someone say, I thought. I thought. I thought, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have sought the Lord's favor, so I felt compelled. How many mistakes do we make because we feel compelled? That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother Sunday. I felt 
compelled to offer a burnt offering. Watch this. He says, you've done foolish. You've done a foolish thing, Samuel. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord that God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom for all time. David was never meant to be king. Solomon was never meant to be king. Rehoboth was never meant to be king. It was always supposed to be Saul and his descendants. Don't you know that you can make one decision in disobedience to God that has set your whole generation off course? Tell the person next to you, don't be anointed and insecure. It's amazing how a person can be anointed but misguided. It's amazing how a person person can be imperial but insecure. It's amazing how a person can be called but captivated by people. See, there's two things that never mix in life, ever. To be called by God and overly concerned with the thoughts of people. Never mix. If you're called to be a leader, you can't think about what people think about. That's why you're leading. You're a mom, you're leading. You're a dad, you're leading. I'm not going to church, mom. Get your butt in the car. We're going to church. I'm leading. I don't want to work, dad. Get your butt on the bus and walk to work. I'm leading. You can't be concerned about what people think about you. You have a few people that you're supposed to be concerned about. He was supposed to be concerned about his leader. Samuel was his leader. He disobeyed God and he disobeyed his leader. You have to be concerned about your husband and your wife. You have to be concerned about your children, what they think about you, but you have to be willing to be loved by the few as opposed to liked by the many. Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. I'd rather be loved by the few that matter than liked by the many. Oh, Saul was anointed, but insecure. Ask the person next to you, are you anointed, but manifest insecurities? Let me see if I can get 10 more minutes here. I remember another time in Saul's life. Oh, man, this is one of the heights of his insecurity. The Bible says that he was, he was fighting against the Amalekites. Now, when the children of Israel were coming out of the land of Egypt, they had to pass by the Amalekites. And God told the Amalekites to let them through. But they were so evil. They were full of witchcraft. They were full of, uh, I don't want to get in trouble. They were full of a lot of the sins that we deal with in our day. They were full of, there were people who thought that good was bad and bad was good. Sounds like a place that we live in now. They, there were people who thought that uh, love is, lo- never mind. There were people who, who, who thought things that were contrary to God's word. And they wouldn't let God's people through. So God vowed. He said, listen, I am going to completely destroy this nation. See, God, he'll destroy the flesh to save the soul. So he said, I'm going to completely destroy this nation. I'm going to use my king, Saul, to do it. So the prophet goes to Saul. says, Saul, God says, I want you to kill the Amalekites. Everybody, everything, man, woman, boy, girl, sheep, dog, parrot, everything. Kill them. Wipe them out. Even the parrots are evil. To can Sam, evil. <laughs> and so he sends him into the town. Oh, God, help me to show them this. He sends him into the town. The Bible says that Saul, he goes in, he wipes out everybody. He comes back and he says, Samuel, I have obeyed God. Samuel says, wait a minute. Why do I hear the bleeping of sheep in my ears? Why do I see that the king is still alive? But I did what you told me to do. Why do I hear people still alive? Saul, have you you been insecure again? Have Have you put people over God again? Here's what he said. 1 Samuel chapter 15. He says, he says in verse 23, you're rebellious. For rebellion is like the sin of what? Divination. And arrogance is like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. From that point forward, Saul was working for God while he was fired by God. Come on. 
I'm walking heavy today, folks. Working for God while fired by God. Then Saul said to Samuel, I've sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. Who's the Lord's command and what? Your instructions. Watch this. I was afraid of the men, and so I gave in to them. Anointed, but insecure. No, I beg you, forgive me. Let's go to the next passage. Watch this. I, I, that was deep, right? But here, there's another level. I got, I got five more minutes. There's another level. There's another level. When you become so fearful and insecure, you place people as idols, you start hurting people around you, you start, you start doing things that you never thought that you'd do, even spiritual things that you never thought you'd end up doing. The Bible says that at this time, the prophet is dead now. Saul has been working for God while he's fired by God. Enemies are against Saul. The scripture declares that he sought the Lord for an answer. And the Lord in those days, he would answer the kings in three ways. Let's look at the passage. First Samuel, I believe it's 28. First Samuel 28. Verse 5 says, when Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid. Here he is scared again. The king, scared. You got power to assassinate people, but you're scared. You got power to make justice and decrees, but you're scared. Uh, how many, I wonder how many people under the sound of my voice right now are anointed but scared. Wow. Uh, how many of you, God has told you to do something, but you're afraid? You may say, I don't know what the Lord told me to do. Yes, you do. You have a Bible. When you, when you, a person that's insecure, it means that you don't know or fully believe who God said you are. Someone say, I believe. I believe. You don't fully believe who God said you are, or you don't fully believe what God told you to do, or you've never... Well, I hope that you were blessed by that message and I hope that God's presence touched you in a profound way. I want you to pray about being a supporter of Gerald A. Johnson Ministries. The Bible says that if you give, something happens. It'll be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. If you want to be blessed, find someone who's helping God and help them. I want you to pray about two things, either giving a one-time contribution, whatever amount the Lord puts on your heart, it could be $10, $20, $50, $1,000, I don't know what the Lord puts on your heart. Or you can pray about becoming a monthly partner so that the blessings of God will perpetually hit your life. Thank you so much. See you next time.